Hey guys, Chuka here. The Sony ZV E10 is probably the easiest camera to set up and use as a webcam on your computer for your video calls. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. Let's go! So there are two ways you can use your Sony ZV E10 as a webcam. One requires you to download the software, the other doesn't. Both methods work on both Mac and Windows, and I personally tested it on both. They work pretty much the same way on both operating systems. Both methods can also be used with the Sony ZV-1 camera if you have that, but for this video, I'll be using the ZV E10 to demonstrate. Let's start with the method that doesn't require you to download the software. This method is pretty much plug and play, but first you need to turn on your camera, switch to the video mode if it's not already there, click on menu, go right to the network section, scroll down to PC remote function, and ensure it's turned off. Click on menu, that will take you back to the previous menu section. Go up, click on smartphone connect, click on smartphone connection, and ensure this is turned on. Then, go to the very top and go right to the setup one section. Scroll down to power setting option, and change the auto power off temperature to high. This will allow you to make video calls with the Sony ZV E10 for a long period of time. Note that you only have to change these settings if you are doing this for the very first time. Then go up, go left to movie 1, click on shoot mode and select your preferred shoot mode. Manual exposure allows you to control your exposure settings yourself. Intelligent Auto controls everything automatically for you. Click on menu, still on the movie 1 section, scroll down and click on USB streaming. The stand I'm using here is a microphone stand that can be used as a stand for lightweight cameras like the ZV E10. The stand is called the Billion Stand. You can just remove this microphone section, insert a quarter inch to 3 8 inch screw adapter at the bottom of your camera and then slide it onto the Billion Stand. Now put your camera on the stand and properly position the camera towards you. I'll leave links to the stand and the screw adapter in the description down below in case you need one. Now plug a USB-C cable to your camera. The USB port of the ZV-10 is located at the left compartment. Plug the other end of the USB to your computer depending on which USB port your computer has. USB-C to USB-C cable for computers that have USB-C ports. USB-C to USB-A cable for computers that have USB-A ports. Then open the software you want to do video call on. Let's use Zoom in this tutorial. Go to Zoom Preferences or Settings. Go to Video, go to the Camera section and change it from FaceTime HD Camera to ZV E10 and you should start seeing the footage from your Sony camera appearing on your screen and you are good to go. That's for the first method. Before we talk about the second method, let's quickly talk about the pros and the cons of the first method. The pros, first, is easy to set up. As you already know, this method doesn't require you to download the software to be able to use your camera as a webcam. Two, the quality of the video feed is wonderful. Nice 1080p video feed. Three, if you're a Mac user, you can also use the Sony ZV-10 as a webcam on FaceTime when using this method. Cool. And lastly, this method also transmits the audio from the camera. That means instead of connecting a USB microphone directly to your computer or using the computer's inbuilt microphone, which isn't the best, you can connect a lavalier or shotgun microphone to your camera and use that as your audio source by going to the audio section in the preferences going to microphone and ensuring ZV E10 is selected instead of the microphone you would otherwise use with your computer. We've talked about the pros, now let's talk about the cons. It has just one disadvantage and that is you cannot record with the camera while the video call is going on, which could be a useful feature to have if you're a content creator. That is the only disadvantage the first method has and the second method which I'll be talking about in a bit solves that, but that method comes at the cost of not having some of the merits of this method that I just showed you. Also, if for some reason the first method didn't work for you, then try the second method. If you're getting value from this video, please subscribe to the channel, like and comment so that YouTube will recommend this video to more people. Thanks! So to use the second method, first you need to download the software called Imaging Edge Webcam. It's a Sony software. I'll leave the download link in the description below. Click on the link, it's going to take you to the download page. Click on download and click on the download option for the operating system you're using. Choose the location you want to save the software. I'll be saving mine to my downloads folder, then click save. Open the software and follow the prompt to complete the installation. Mm -hmm. 
When it's done, it's going to tell you the installation was successful and that you need to restart your computer. So save any work you have going on and click on Restart. When you have started your system, you wouldn't actually find the installed software on your computer if you look for it. It's not a full-blown software like other software on your computer. What that installation basically did was assign itself to the video call software you have on your computer. So when you go to Zoom, Preferences, Video, Camera, on that camera you see Sony Camera in bracket Imaging Edge, which is what we just installed. Click on that. Then go to your camera. We need to turn off Smartphone Connect and turn PC Remote Function back on. Go to the Network 1 section, Smartphone Connect, Smartphone Connection, and click on Off. Click on Menu to go back. Go to PC Remote Function, PC Remote, and turn it on. Connect the camera to your computer using the USB cable just like we did earlier, and you're going to start seeing your live feed. If you have an SD card in your camera and you hit the record button, you'll be able to record yourself and still video call at the same time, giving you access to high resolution footage of your video call. But notice how this quality isn't as good as the first option. So quality wise, the first method is better. I guess Sony did not optimize the software for the ZV-E10, considering they already made the first method specially for it. The first method doesn't work for other Sony cameras, except the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10, as we already know. But unlike the first method, this take home method doesn't work with FaceTime, and it also doesn't transmit audio from the camera. So you have to connect your microphone to your computer. If you want to know what comes in the box of a brand new Sony ZV-E10, then click on this card to watch the unboxing video and find out. If you're in the market for a new camera and you're not sure of which to buy, then click on this card to watch another video I made about which Sony camera you should buy in 2022. That's it for this video guys, thanks for watching, if you got value from this video, kindly subscribe, share and leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. Cheers!